Warning. Colossal spoilers ahead. Once upon a time, on a brisk October evening, a family is looking for a movie to watch on Disney+. All of a sudden, Hocus Pocus 2 appears on the screen and fills everyone with joy. The children are intrigued by the colorful thumbnail image, while the parents are nostalgic about the original Hocus Pocus. So the family pops some corn, sits on the couch, and puts on this spooky but children-friendly movie, one that is sure to put everyone in the Halloween spirit. Then, it happens. Hardcore indoctrination. Indeed, Hocus Pocus 2 was not made to simply entertain. It drills children on important social agendas. It mixes the concepts of feminism and sisterhood with Satanism and witchcraft in an unholy stew that is served to unsuspecting children worldwide. In many ways, Hocus Pocus 2 is the exact opposite of the original Hocus Pocus. In the 1993 movie, the witches are, without a doubt, the villains. Why? Because they worship the devil and eat children. That's reason enough, right? Then, they wreak havoc on modern-day Salem in their unique and silly way. While they're entertaining, the witches still need to be banished forever, because, like, they keep luring and eating children. In Hocus Pocus 2, things are way more complicated. The witches still worship the devil and eat children, but they have valid reasons to do so. They're not cursed, depraved hags anymore, they're strong and empowered women who are misunderstood. In short, Hocus Pocus 2 wants you to side with the witches. To do so, Hocus Pocus 2 starts with an origin story that makes the witches sympathetic to the viewers. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. At the beginning of the original Hocus Pocus, the old creepy witches kill a young girl by sucking away her life force. As the witches regain their youthful looks, they cackle away like harpies, clearly indicating to the viewers that these wretched characters are the villains. In Hocus Pocus 2, it's the complete opposite. Hocus Pocus 2 begins in 1653 Salem with a young version of the Sanderson sisters. At the beginning of Hocus Pocus 2, a young Winifred Sanderson celebrates her 16th birthday with her two sisters. However, the festivities are cut short when the reverend of the village knocks on their door and orders Winifred to marry some guy she doesn't like. When Winifred refuses, the reverend orders the sisters to be separated. The reverend is depicted as an oppressive and ignorant figure. He represents Christianity to the viewers. Right from the opening scenes, the viewers are made to side with the witches against the reverend and the church in general. Everything that follows continues on the same left-handed path. When the three sisters flee to the woods, they hear the creepy song the witches sing to lure children. Come little children, I take thee away into a land of enchantment. That's the theme song of the occult elite. Then, the mother witch appears. In the original Hocus Pocus, the witches are ugly and grotesque. In Hocus Pocus 2, the first witch we see is a glamorous, empowered woman. Also, she has an all-seeing eye on her dress, indicating her allegiance with the occult elite. After attempting to poison and eat the sisters, the mother witch realizes that the girls are actually potential witches. So, she gives Winifred a birthday gift. A spellbook bound by human skin and handed down by the devil himself. Of course, there's a single eye on the book. As the three sisters browse through the wide array of powerful spells contained in that book, they realize that they can now exact revenge on the village that banished them. This is when they realize that Satan is cool. Then, the mother witch tells the sisters. One day, Salem will belong to us. Throughout the movie, there are mentions of the witches taking back Salem. That's because, in real life, Salem was the site of the infamous witch trials. The Salem Witch Trials were a series of hearings and prosecutions of people accused of witchcraft in colonial Massachusetts between February 1692 and May 1693. More than 200 people were accused. 30 people were found guilty, 19 of whom were executed by hanging, 14 women and 5 men. 
As we'll see, this movie is actually about witches retaking Salem and doing great PR for them. At one point, the mother witch wonders why the world is not too fond of witches. Young Mary answers. Perhaps because thou eateth the children. The mother witch promptly responds. How else does one stay young and ridiculously beautiful? With this answer, the mother witch's cannibalistic ways are reframed as something fabulous and empowering. What a great way of normalizing the occult elite's real-life obsession with consuming children to remain youthful. Then, the sisters go back to the village and use the devil's spellbook to burn the reverend's house. Winifred watches in glee as the house burns down and the reverend yells about it being Satan's work. To children whose entire lives are based on their parents not allowing them to do things, watching this scene is cathartic. Black magic gave these girls the power to get back at oppressive adults, and the children watching this think that it's cool. In the original Hocus Pocus, the hero is Max Dennison, a smart and courageous teenage boy who takes on the witch's head on. The heroes of the original Hocus Pocus. Just regular kids who don't want to be eaten. In Hocus Pocus 2, things are very different. The protagonists of Hocus Pocus 2 are Becca and Izzy, two teenage girls who are fascinated with witchcraft. The eyes on Izzy's shirt, right, symbolically refer to the eye on the mother witch's dress. They're on her side. In Hocus Pocus 2, the male protagonist is a bumbling fool named Mike. Not only is he depicted as a useless cowardly idiot, but he also keeps offending Becca and Izzy. Every time Mike says something, the camera immediately cuts to the girls rolling their eyes in disbelief at his idiocy. In 2022, male protagonists cannot be strong, heroic, or even smart. They must be jerks. Masculinity is bad. Witches are good. Because Mike is a representative of toxic masculinity, Becca finds it okay to mess with him. So, during a class, she freaks him out by whispering a fake spell that ends with the word Satan, which sounds like Satan. This screenshot shows Mike's girlfriend tells Becca that her spell ended with a word that sounded like Satan. Throughout Hocus Pocus 2, we hear expressions such as Holy Lucifer and by Lucifer's hangnail. The constant invocation of satanic entities in a children's movie made by Disney is rather off-putting. However, it is completely in line with the elite's agenda of normalizing everything satanic. The same exact pattern was found in Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. In this Netflix series about a teenage witch, we keep hearing expressions such as Holy Satan. Also, witchcraft is portrayed as a potent tool of female empowerment, while nearly all males in the series are jerks who need to be punished. In Hocus Pocus 2, the wannabe witches inadvertently bring back the Sanderson sisters on Halloween night by doing a ritual. Contrary to their 1993 appearance, the witches are greeted in 2022 like superstars. In the first Hocus Pocus, the witches are not welcomed in Salem. Because, for one, they lure and eat children. That's a pretty good reason. In Hocus Pocus 2, things are different. As soon as they are summoned by the teenage girls, the witches put on an entertaining performance. The lyrics of their introductory song are quite telling. We were running wild and so reviled, raising Cain until we got exiled. But times are changing, and now we're on the attack, yeah, the spell is gonna hit ya. Because the witches are back, in Hocus Pocus 2, there's a running theme of times changing. While, in the first Hocus Pocus, the witches were evil, the narrative in 2022 has changed. Today, witches are good, and the movie constantly defends them. For instance, at one point, a character says that the witches are evil because, like, they lure and eat children. So another character immediately defends them. Only because they had to be. You know, they were ahead of their time and they were misunderstood. Then, the whole world was against them. But now, look, everybody loves them. Yup, times have changed. When the Sanderson sisters visit 2022 Salem, they realize that the town idolizes them. This screenshot shows the witches meet teenagers who are dressed like them because they worship them. 
So, they take a selfie. Wow, these witches are so cool and relevant. Later, the witches find themselves in Salem's Halloween festival. They discover that there's a contest for the best Sanderson sisters lookalikes. Of course, there had to be a team of drag queens. Disney has got to push that gen agenda to these children. After the contest, the Sanderson sisters perform a song that bewitches the crowd. This shot of young people being mind-controlled by the witches' song is an apt representation of mass media brainwashing children with its satanic agenda. The song contains these lines. One way or another, we're going to snatch you. The recurring theme of abducting children is upsetting in itself. But it gets worse when we realize that the witches are not actually portrayed as evil. Is it a coincidence that the logo of Hocus Pocus 2 contains a symbol used to identify pedophiles? The spiral in Hocus Pocus 2 is quite similar to the spiral used to identify little boy lovers in FBI files. The Sanderson sisters then use the mind-controlled kids to seek out the mayor of Salem, because they want to kill him. The reason is, he's a descendant of the Reverend. However, the mayor is the father of Becca and Izzy's friend, so they must stop the witches. By becoming witches. In the original Hocus Pocus, the heroes gained possession of the Devil's Spell Book and were tempted to use it against the witches. However, Binks the Cat stops them and angrily yells out, nothing good can come out of that book, you got it. And that was the end of that. The book was evil, so they didn't use it. The protagonists ultimately banished the witches with good old-fashioned wit and courage. In Hocus Pocus 2, it's the exact opposite. The Devil's Spell Book actually saves the day. At the end of the movie, Becca and her friends read from the Book of Spells to get rid of the Sanderson sisters. They're now a coven. The girl on the left is the daughter of the mayor who is a descendant of the Reverend. Therefore, she broke her family's Puritan lineage and converted to the witch's side. Considering the fact that the Sanderson sisters are sympathetic figures in Hocus Pocus 2, they are banished from Salem in a very compassionate way. Instead of burning them to ashes because, like, they lure and eat children, the ending is all about Winifred reuniting with her sisters in a dignified manner. At the movie's climactic end, Winifred gets an emotional send-off as she disappears in a magical whirlwind, while whimsical music plays in the background. Even the book sheds a tear for Winifred. Poor satanic book. In short, the witches were never really the bad guys. They were misunderstood women who valued the importance of sisterhood. The movie ends with the three teenage girls walking side by side, exactly like the Sanderson sisters. Moral of the story is, Evil One. Comparing the original Hocus Pocus with Hocus Pocus 2 is a revealing exercise. It exposes the complete reversal of morals and values communicated to children by mass media in the 21st century. Despite the fact that the witches are obsessed with luring and eating children to remain youthful, the movie portrays them as sympathetic, empowered women. The fact that they sold their soul to the devil for witch powers was a big deal in the first movie. In the second, it is not an issue at all. The rest of the movie is all about teenage girls discovering the powers of witchcraft and the joys of forming a coven of witches. Of course, this implies that they'll eventually have to submit to Satan and eat children to stay alive. But, hey, it's 2022. We're cool with that now. So, the family that simply wanted to watch a fun Halloween movie ended up being subjected to a session of indoctrination that culminated with three teenage girls converting to Satanism. The End What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.